steam locomotives had did their work until the diesels came to replace them. Thanks to preservation, some steam locomotives are on display at museums, and some of them are operating on excursions. There are over 2,000 preserved in the U.S. Preservation is what we do to keep them out of extinction. But sadly, there are tons of steam locomotives that are extinct. From famous speed demons to underrated heavy haulers, I'm going to count down the top 15 extinct steam locomotives. Man, this video is probably going to rip off Christopher Kovacs. Number 15, the Norfolk and Western Y6Bs. This engine would have been on a higher spot on the list if it wasn't for engine number 2156 at the Virginian Museum of Transportation in Roanoke and number 2050 at the Illinois Railway Museum. Those are not Y6Bs. One is a Y6A and the other is a Y3A. The Y6Bs are stronger. In fact, Y6Bs are one of the strongest steam locomotives ever built. They were just as strong as Union Pacific Big Boys. They even tried to be fuel efficient if, as the exhaust steam from the rear set of drivers would go into the front set of drivers. This caused the engine to be slow, but the Y6Bs were pretty fast. They were built to haul heavy coal trains up the mountains until the diesels came along to replace them. I had expected there to be more surviving steam locomotives from the Norfolk and Western Railway since they spent longer time with steam engines than any other railroad. All the Y6Bs were then scrapped. However, one Y6B made it close to preservation, engine number 2174, after being used on a farewell to steam excursion well, the Norfolk and Western had a ton of farewell to steam excursions. It was sent to a scrapyard in Roanoke, awaiting its chance for preservation. In the end, the head of the fundraiser had passed away, and the scrapyard had gotten a new owner, which had no interest in preserving the engine. And so, the 2174, the last of the Y6Bs, was scrapped. It was a shame that a Y6B got away before preservationists had the chance to save it. But it's great to know that we have 2050 and 2156 to complete the length of the chain in Roanoke's Big Three. Number 14, the New York Central 484 Niagara's. Most 484's are called Northerns, but the New York Central decided to name their 484's after the Niagara Falls. Only 27 of these 484's were ever made, and the New York Central built 275 Hudsons, all of those were scrapped, so don't expect any Niagara's to survive. These Niagara's do not have steam domes.
which resulted in a smooth contour along the top of the boiler. A perforated pipe collected the steam instead. Some 484s are used on passenger trains, while some 484s are used on freight trains. The Niagaras were used on passenger trains. Later on, the firebox wrappers failed. The locomotives were eventually withdrawn, and then the diesels replaced them. That had sealed the fate of the Niagaras. All of them were scrapped. Number 13. The Santa Fe 464 Blue Goose Hudson. This engine was the only streamlined steam locomotive on the Santa Fe Railroad, and is a rail fan favorite during its time, until it was scrapped. However, there is a surviving Santa Fe Hudson, number 3463. It's just a shame that it wasn't the streamlined one that survived. In fact, there are hardly any surviving streamliners around today. This totally sucks, since streamliners are awesome. Number 12. Santa Fe and Virginian 21010s. Both these engines are together on this spot, since they're the only engines with the two ten ten two wheel arrangement. A rare wheel arrangement to begin with. The Santa Fe two ten ten twos were built to double the power of the two ten two Santa Fe types. They look like they have a long boiler. But really, it only begins in front of the rear set of drivers. I do think the tender looks pretty cool. It just looks nice, the fact that the tender is streamlined. The engine had a very strange boiler. It just worked in a very strange way. And because of that... The engine was not very successful. The engine was later on c cut into two different engines and became two 10-2s. The Virginian engines, however, worked a lot better. Exhaust steam from the rear set of drivers would go into the front set of drivers, just like the Y6Bs mentioned earlier. The two front cylinders were the largest cylinders any steam engine had ever had. They were 24 inches in radius. That is a 4 feet diameter. One problem was that these engines were slow. They were strong, but slow. All these engines retired in the 1940s, and later on, they were scrapped. Number 11. The Erie 0880L1 Camelbacks. Most steam locomotives require special coal. Some coal wasn't good enough for certain steam engines. The Erie Railroad wanted to take advantage of that kind of coal. This required in building an engine with a very large firebox, 
which would get in the way of the driver's view. So the cab was placed in front of the firebox, creating a camelback. The Eerie had wanted to create an articulated one with an O880 wheel arrangement. And so, three were built in the year 1907, the year the Cubs won their first World Series. They were used to push heavy trains up steep grades. In 1921, they were rebuilt as 2882s. In December 1930, larger locomotives replaced them, and then they were scrapped. Number 10 Southern Pacific AC-9s The Southern Pacific had liked their cab forwards, but wished they had an engine to run on the southern portion of the railroad. And so, a grand total of 12 AC-9s were built in 1939. They had originally burnt coal, but then converted into oil fire in 1952. They were partly streamlined as they used the skyline casing from the famous GS class Northerns used in passenger service. Sadly, all 12 of these AC 9s were retired in 1956 and then scrapped later on. I agree with Christopher Koufax that these AC 9s do look pretty good. It's a shame, really, that none of them had survived. Number 9 The Baltimore and Ohio N1444 Duplex There was only one ever built. It was numbered 5600. It was built in 1937, and then later on it was on display at the 1939 New York World's Fair. It wasn't the only duplex where there was only one ever built because it was unsuccessful at the 1939 New York World's Fair. In case if you don't know what duplex means, it means more than one set of drivers on a single wheel frame. Both sets of pistons were facing in different directions. The rear set of pistons were too close to the firebox. This caused them to overheat and they had to be very careful with those pistons. Because of that, this engine was unsuccessful. It had retired in 1943 and scrapped seven years later.